your mother was just an amazing trailblazer in the world of meteorology, not just for women, not just for minorities, but for all meteorologists, she was a trailblazer. So I'd love to get some background um, from you about her and what it was like in the early part of her career. Can you tell me about early in life and her interest in weather and how she got started becoming interested in it? Yes. Um, uh, thank you for asking. And it's, uh, I, uh, people ask me why I'm in, uh, involved in climate tech today, which is, is my uh, professional path, but partly, and I always say it was in my DNA. Uh, maybe that's the truth. <laughs> my mom uh, uh, and I were very close uh, and we, she was married three times and to had full custody of, of uh, her, her daughter throughout. Uh, was friends of all of all of her husbands. I always say she they just couldn't keep up with her. Uh, but she was uh, uh, born with a mission, and uh, was very clear on uh, uh, was very clear on that. Uh, she became a meteorologist when she saw the mushroom cloud on the cover of a Time magazine as a, as a young student, and was truly uh, concerned about what the part the particles. Uh, from the mus mushroom crowd was going to do the atmosphere. I mean, that just vanished. I mean, I was not thinking about that when I, when I was a young student. Right. But my mom's mind was just uh, the, the curiosity and the dedication and the uh, and and really the commitment uh, being gifted with you know skills as we all are. We're here. We're professionals. We, uh, but but really being uh, gifted to uh, to and knowing that she was here for a mission and that was. Uh, that was her mission. Um, and she pursued meteorology, quite frankly, with a vengeance, because at that time, there were so many objections about why uh, she shouldn't. Um, but she did because she truly believed she was meant to um, be part of the ecosystem of, of discerning, uh, uh, you know, frankly, issues directly related to climate change. Um, and, and back then, you know, obviously, uh, uh, nuclear power, uh, well, nuclear bombs specifically, not power. Pardon me, because that's another. <laughs> that's another. That's a clean tech story. Um, <laughs> but, but, but you know that that was part of it. That was part of it. Uh, but and the world wasn't really thinking about the environment or thinking about what they were doing in the atmosphere. So that's why she pursued meteorology. Um, it was against all odds. She was. Uh, she had, uh, as she did everything, uh, mapped out her her path. So uh, Friends University, where she uh, was at the time at Michigan, at uh, Wichita, uh, she pursued a math. She knew she would do two years of math before transferring to a four-year meteorology program because Friends did not have one. And she had already mapped out the schools around the country that had a four-year meteorology program and specifically went to UCLA because as a, growing up in a fairly conservative family, she could only go to a, a school away from home near a relative. Uh, so my aunt lived in Westwood. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, uh, that, but literally that was, uh, you know, cause and effect, factoring in uh, what she could and could not do. But she, UCLA was her number one choice because uh, Aunt uh, Tensi lived in Westwood. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me, I don't mean to laugh, but uh, that's you know that's the truth. Um, and when she arrived at New UCLA with the, as an honors math student, the uh, counts and she and she declared meteorology as her major. Uh, the uh, counselor, uh, her her appointed counselor, uh, discouraged her and 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 dissuaded, uh, tried to dissuade her by saying that was not a good path uh, for a, a smart young woman that she should pursue home economics. And my mom uh, uh, obviously uh, didn't agree, but she took uh, thermodynamics that next sem semester along with home economics and got a C plus in home ec and an a, a plus in thermodynamics. And um, she was very disappointed about the C plus. And that was probably the only one she received in her entire academic career. Um, but my point is there was, there was no support. And I, I said at the outset that the AMS had, had been uh, foundational uh, in supporting my mother. Uh, and my mom, while she was at UCLA within uh, that first um, first or second semester, uh, <laughs> went to the AMS. <laughs> uh, and um, I don't know what she did. I just know who she met and the outcome. I don't even know why she did. I mean, I, it would never occur to me to go to a professional organization. Um, but she went to the AMS and she found, uh, you know, frankly, uh, very friendly and supportive uh, white men who were um, her mentors. 
um, her early mentors. And she was also uh, working on a project um, uh, simultaneously while in school uh, with the, um, uh, the the Weather Service in, in Washington, D.C. So her by this time, she's a junior in college and she was already uh, involved or active, if you would say, in the local AMS and, and, and had a, a project in D.C. with the, uh, uh, the Weather Service, you know, now NOAA at the time. Uh, and I just uh, so I grew up uh, knowing very clearly uh, about mission uh, and and resistance and resilience. <laughs> I mean, so she was born in the 20s. So we're talking 40s and 50s here that she's in college. Yeah. How did she even know that she was good at math and this was a career that even existed? I didn't know these things in the 90s. And so I, I don't know how this is possible. Did she have a great support system? Were her parents very supportive of this? Well, um, she was born in 1928. So she was in schools, uh, uh, you know, by, by the time she was in college, it was in the early 50s. Um, she was born so no um her she was raised by um her her great aunt um her her uh, and her her parents divorced at, at a very young age um and and her dad uh, uh just my grand you know my grandfather died early um the women that she was raised by were uh entrepreneurs uh and trailblazers in their own right uh and i i think it's that dna um is the dna that you have as an entrepreneur and, and very much of what i described is a entrepreneurial discipline um you know in in this case within the the world of ac academics and science um but that that spirit of uh, resilience that spirit of uh figuring it out um you know a a, do a, a no is another way of uh, figuring out how to get to a yes i mean that's all really uh the DNA of, a, of an entrepreneur, and she was raised by um, uh, two aunts who uh, ran their own businesses against the odds uh, uh, in the in the areas that they were professional in, um, including Aunt Tinsy, <laughs> who was in Westwood. Um, and that is, uh, and I think it's more the support system of 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 confidence, of of love, of knowing that. Even though you're surrounded by a world of no's and 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 people don't necessarily see what you have to offer, but knowing I mean, having that security um, and confidence in yourself, um, she didn't. She knew she did her own research. I mean, she spent uh, hours. At, I mean, got it wasn't even the internet then. I'm just fascinated. But she, um, it, it wasn't. You know, I always say it wasn't that my mom was antisocial. It just, you know, she was a high learner at a very young age. And so she was friends with a librarian because <laughs> that's where she spent most of her time. Um, I mean, she had friends, but uh, but she was always in the library because that's where you found, that's where you were able to learn. Um, and a lot of this wasn't even in, you know, the local schools of, in Wichita. Um, so she knew who the first meteorologist was. I mean, she did her pretty extensive homework um on the field of meteorology and who who was the first uh um uh, you know who were who were the first in the respective profession in terms of of academia in particular and speaking of first she was the first degreed female meteorologist to give an on-air weather report correct she was the first uh, meteorologist on-air broadcast um uh she was first female um, meteorologists uh, and broadcasts, uh, you know, I don't, I, I, it, others, some say the world. I mean, I don't know about the world. I know about the U S um, mm -hmm. I let others do their homework and tell me. <laughs> uh, 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 so I, but yes, she was. And, um, and she knew that was another pursuit of hers. She was a scientist first and she was very clear um, um, early on that she wanted to be a broadcast meteorologist. She, uh, so her, her dream was not, I mean, that was a vision from really day one. So the years as a radar meteorologist um, in the Atomic Energy Commission and the National Weather Service um, um, in, in many ways were, was training for her as she pers uh, knew her next step was broadcast journalism. She took classes in journalism at night at NYU while working full-time during the day for the National Weather Service. 
um, you know, doing doing the doing pro, pro, forecasting the weather with brother, weather balloons and all those things they had back then. Um, and she did that because she was always her her number one goal was all was preparedness. I mean, she and there's no question you raised that to me. She always said chance favors the prepared mind. Um, so she didn't have to take journalism courses at night. She was already, you know, a well credentialed graduate of of, right. uh, of uh, UCLA and um, and ultimately USC. But she she did because she thought that would help enhance um, the the producers um, in uh, in the the world of uh, media uh, that she would be had the credentials for a chief meteorology degree. Um, so all of that was about preparedness. And of course, it, it's um, you know I happen to be Christian, so things happen for a reason, I believe. And my mother was Christian um, so as, as well. Um, we the the uncanny opportunity that occurred at WGR was um, it had to be clearly. I mean, yes, the history of broadcast journalism, but probably just history period was was uh, um, was another power. I mean, I, you know, again, that's just that's what I what I say, uh, because she, had, she was prepared. She was prepared. She for years while she was working full time, flooded back then it was mail, sent out a lot of uh, uh, a, a lot of and, and, and forgive me because I, I back then they used Betamax. I mean, she sent a lot of information to TV. <laughs> I remember <stations>. those. <laughs> I, and, you know, I just um, yeah, we it was, I, I mailed some of those. Um, I mean, we were we I really. She she was uh, we were very very close, um, and I was part of her journey and part of all the no's that came back. And when she accepted a job as a science reporter, I was stunned and disappointed, quite frankly, because she she was you know by now she had moved up the managerial level at, at, the, at the National Weather Service, and you know she I would go to her office and I you know <laughs> see people I worked for her, and I was I couldn't un, I didn't understand why she would walk away and become a science reporter. Um, but she told me that um, that this was the avenue uh, to be a chief meteorologist, she believed, and that she was going to, and, and, and she did. I mean, there was, there was no question in her mind to walk away from, you know, from a successful career, frankly, um, as a scientist in the world of broad, to the world of broadcast journalism, as a science reporter, knowing that she had more to give, and she did. Uh, and then uh, when Frank Many robbed the the tele, the, the bank um, while she was at WGR, she had only been there maybe five or six months. But believe me, from the moment she got there, as you can imagine, she was already speaking to uh, anyone that would listen, <laughs> that she was a, a backup if Frank Benny was sick or, you know, whatever you know, she, she was the, she wanted to be the go-to meteorologist when the chief meteorologist wasn't on the air, um, you know, for, for whatever reason and, um, or it be on the weekends. Uh, so it was uh, known, but it wasn't necessarily embraced, if I may say, oh, I mean, that's the truth. Um, when uh, the chief meteorologist robbed the bank um, in the afternoon, uh, she didn't hesitate. I mean, clearly who prepares for that? But that's, you know, you go back to chance favors, the prepared mind. It was uh, within seconds. She was knocking on the producer's door, not only saying that she was ready to be the chief meteorologist, but saying she was ready to go on the air in three hours um, because she had always practiced. <laughs> so <laughs> like the, the ultimate understudy. Um, so that was and and the, the rest speaks for itself. I mean, the, the public um, the, the, that night, the next day, the next day, there were calls and God, I mean, back then there were calls more than emails um, of of how much they enjoy the weather. Uh, hey, they meaning, you know, this is, this is in, in Buffalo. So I, I look at this trajectory and, and, and see her path. Um, and we don't know the how, uh, but the result <laughs> was she was, became the first female meteorologist in, uh, in broadcast journalism. And she knew well, um, the, the, uh, the AMS award. I mean, she knew, and she had studied, um, the requirements and you know how you know what they are. I mean, I know they've evolved over time. Um, and she knew exactly what the requirements was to uh, to get, you know, back then it was a seal of approval. And the moment she stepped in the role of chief meteorologist, she began that journey. And she began <laughs> that journey with a vengeance, like she pursued everything else. Right on to the next goal. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Um, and it because honestly, part of the reason she did that um, was she want she knew herself and obviously her fans, but she 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 just wanted to to pursue the the seal of approval because that is the highest credential uh, at the time uh, uh, by the AMS and her there's nothing to be you know you're being regarded and and honored and and accepted and uh, by your peers is uh is the ultimate for anyone in any profession um so there was no question she was going to try and she probably i mean i don't know in terms of time i know she got it in you know record time but um which doesn't surprise me but she um uh, crossed that that bridge and was really proud the day she got the seal because it for her that was uh validation you know if you will i mean and, and that is uh um fueled her it fueled her to to be a speaker uh and a supporter for other women um and uh and diverse meteorologists from all um walks of life and she but really wanted to uh share uh the joy of of communicating you know, frankly, uh, weather and, and meteorology uh, with with everyone. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like especially later in her career, she gave back a lot. She began teaching. She founded the AMS board on women and minorities. So was that a push you saw later in her career, this, this giving back and continuing to learn herself and broaden her career as she continued in her own career? Um, it was actually during her career um, and later. I mean, I, so I was I uh, when she was at WGR. I was by by uh, um, uh, I pursued science myself um, and began competing in science fairs. So um, I, my mom, uh, I, I smile because I can't say I would figure this out with my own children. Um, and my mom, uh, in order to support, and I had gone. I was national. I was competing nationally um, um, after after a point. Um, so in order to be with me as a mother and support my science projects, uh, she went to the first one and she saw these these students. Um, we're now high school students, you know, for freshmen, sophomore high school students with uh, weather projects. And there was no representation from the AMS. Um, there were others, you know, the American. Uh, the uh, I was in I was in the engineering portion. Um, so there were, you know, engineering professional societies, but not the AMS. And so she went to the AMS and shared. And uh, so she's the one that started uh, the AMS participating um, in, in the National Science Fairs for high school students um, because her daughter was. And, but that but she also saw the opportunity for the AMS um, because I was a I was a, a, a contestant. Um, so it was always throughout. Um, it was never a, a one without the other. Um, it, it was, uh, she was able to be a meteorologist um, and a mother. Um, and yes, it was probably no coincidence. That I, I, she brought, she brought me up with the idea of spent a uh, STEM uh, uh, from the moment I was in grade school. <laughs> so it, and fortunately I had an aptitude uh, for, for math and engineering. I mean, I, I'm, I'm more focused on the engineering portion, but the, um, but to be able to, uh, pursue my dreams and be a, a mom uh, and have her uh, come to the science fair and, and see me present and then go and 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 meet the the students that were interested in and in, in weather and uh, and uh, space <laughs> and represent the AMS um, you know was that was well, I guess what they call multitasking <laughs> so <clears throat> oh, yeah, a question and tell me if this is too personal. No, no. I, grew, I grew up in a, a similar house. My mother was an engineer. It was very much, you know, pressed upon the importance of this. She worked a lot of hours. She traveled a lot. Um, and that's how I learned about STEM careers. And I was headed for an engineering path, but then discovered this amazing world of weather. And I was like, that's so much more fun. No, so I'm curious about having a mother that is such a huge role in the world. Um, and is doing such important things. What is it like being just the child of that mother and perhaps not getting those um, home economic skills that <laughs> perhaps you would have liked to have, you know, the mother who can make cookies or be the yeah. room mother? Um, was it just That's a great question? Yeah, no, I, I have no the balance. That question. That's a great question. I have uh, uh, very little home economic skills. 
And uh, my mother was always the first to say to say to my children, you know, she is not, she is not, you know, come to her house to, you know, have grandma make her cookies. Um, and they went to camp grandma every year, but it was not to make cookies. Um, it, 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 so there's so two things. One, um, my mom was very clear on on time and uh, and go to your stripes. We had uh, we were. Yeah, we 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 were middle class. We, we certainly weren't wealthy, but we you know she was a scientist. Uh, we 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 had help. We had a, had a, had a nanny, uh, who uh, she said you know her job was to be with with me and personally not you know washing my clothes because there was just no time. Not like she can't wash clothes. It's just there wasn't time to to work full time um, and to be present um, to me as a daughter. Uh, which is why we had help. And she was very clear on that. And everyone was part of the family. I mean, our, our housekeeper was part of our family. Um, so I, I was clear on, on time. I was clear on uh, her, her career and her position. I was also clear on my extended family. She grew up at a time when, so my aunt had the first baby in Congress, Yuman Bathe Burke. Uh, my mom was personal friends with Martin Luther King. I mean, I was, my mom was, grew up at a time where uh, and, and surrounded herself, frankly, uh, in, in in a world and a network, a, a wider network of leaders um, of of from of whether it's women or uh, of diverse men or, or white men who were leaders in their own right and who had a mission, uh, mission driven, uh, mission focus is how I was growing up, you know, too too much was given. You you I mean as I said that you know that's obviously partly Christian too. Um, to those that are given much, you know, you, you're ex expected to give back. Um, she was part of a coalition of scientists uh, in the early 60s who uh, advanced the signing of the nuclear uh, test ban theory uh, in the JFK administration. So for me, community service uh, and giving back and uh, was front was first and foremost. Um, and that was in whatever the whatever profession I learned, whatever profession I pursued, um, it was expected because of the, you know, frankly, the, you know, the resources that we had the privilege um, to have and, and they were expected to grow. Um, that's how I and I recognize, um, you know, I certainly had other friends who had who weren't quite as driven <laughs> um, as I was or had, uh, you know, different you know, but that was that's a whole part of you know having sort of a diverse a diversity and and uh, not just in gender and race, but in and in, in, um, in sort of the the environment of where you grow up. Um, I don't. I grew up in five different cities by the time I I was a junior in high school, um, and so that, and partly because you know we went where the ratings went, um, or and and um, my mom had full custody of 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 you know of her daughter. Um, that was, I did, I lived by coastal most of my life, um, at a time when <laughs> that was an oxymoron and it wasn't because we, you know, were wealthy and had all these houses everywhere. <laughs> it was because, you know, my mom was a, I always say she was married to my stepfather the longest. He's a labor attorney in San Francisco and he knew to keep my mom, he had to let her go. Uh, and he was very supportive of her, uh, and her chosen, um, field and, and where, wherever they took her. Um, and they figured it out through the, the 70s and the 80s, having a bicoastal marriage. I mean, I didn't even I mean, I didn't quite notice that uh, I mean, that it didn't occur to me to do anything else. I mean, I knew others did other things and others had different parents and different lifestyles. Um, and this is mine. Um, so I I've been I you know, what is the output of that? Well, you know, I'm not a great cook. I mean, a horrible cook. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, that's probably the output, yet? you know, <laughs> I, like, I could blame it on my mom. I'm like, mm. you know, but, um, but I, I had a, a, a wonderful um, caregiver taking care of my kids uh, growing up who was, and, and part of the criteria when you have your list, <laughs> cooking was right up there. Because <laughs> I didn't want the meeting out of cans, you know, <laughs> um, so it, it uh, it's just figuring it out. Um, figuring out, you know, knowing, knowing, not knowing your mission, uh, knowing, and part of your mission is family, uh, and and figuring out how to combine uh, family uh, with a work mission and honoring the skills as you have uh, the skills that you were uh, born with, uh, the the fact that you pursued the career that you did, you you were obviously gifted in having the skill sets 
uh, skill set to do that. Um, and and we're so fortunate to have you know education um, and under and and having the <laughs> and being forthright enough and confident enough to go ca- get the education when it was attempted to be denied. You know that's part of our DNA as women because uh, there are so many obstacles uh, uh, less so today, but still exist uh, in terms of access to ex- education. Um, and and therefore, um, some are not able to pursue pursue um, careers and and uh, and dreams. Um, albeit, my mom was always say this always away, um, and it's not necessarily the path that you think about. But you know that's why being prepared was one hundred and ten percent what she did all the time. So it's indefensible, absolutely indefensible that uh, she was uh, where she was and and uh, in positions that she had. Um, because it's not just from an academic perspective, but skills and experience um, and delivering. Um, so, is there any advice or quick words of wisdom you think that your mom would want to offer to current female broadcast meteorologists or future female broadcast meteorologists or all broadcast meteorologists? Her mission, her her message never changed. I mean, from the day I remember as a young girl to, you know, frankly, the day that she passed, I mean, she retired at 89. I mean, she was not like, <laughs> and died at night. I mean, she wasn't, um, yeah, that was the fuel. She got up in the morning because of her mission. Uh, so reach for the stars. She always said that. She said that to uh, San Mateo High School and she said that on, you know, CNN, <laughs> yeah. um, reach for the stars. And she really said that with every conviction and you know everyone knows what those stars are uh but that is the the mission of delivering me uh the weather and being in a position of broadcast journalism uh in the world today is tremendous opportunity to reach for the stars and and the rest will come dale thank you so much for your time this has been great i've loved hearing every second of your story it's been very inspirational I really appreciate your reaching out. Thank you so much. And I hope, and I trust we'll stay connected.